Hey folks, this is Gray here, and is Timu for preppers? To kind of give you a backstory of this video in general, uh, basically the wife, the daughter, uh, they use Timu for little tidbits and odds and ends and things around the house and kind of like clothing and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, one time my wife showed me the app and kind of was giving me some ideas and I was like, oh, there's some pretty cool stuff on there. Is it quality? Uh, you know, I had certain questions in regards to that. And uh, lo and behold, Timu reaches out to me via email. So I decided to go ahead and accept the offer that Timu had to offer. They said, hey, Gray, we'd like to work with you. Uh, we'll give you a $100 uh, credit, grab some stuff, and uh, let us know what you think in regards to the products. So here's what I did for you, my viewers, is I worked at a deal that if you have never even heard of Timu, and this is your first time seeing what Timu is, uh, basically, it's an app, just like you have your Amazons and your Sheens and your Alibabas and all the other little apps that you can buy stuff. Uh, this is an app like that, um, except what they are is they're a wholesale that deals directly to the public so that you get the best and cheapest prices possible on the products that they offer. Now, what they did for my viewers is if you download the app and use your app on your first purchase, you will get 50% off your order. 50% off. So if you order $100 worth of stuff, you get 50% off. I will put that down in the description, also into a pinned comment. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what I decided to grab from Timu. I, I got some kitchen items. I got some medical items. I got some radios, biofang radios to be exact, and a couple little odds and ends for the garden uh, just to see the quality, the look, and uh, kind of give it a go around. We're not going to go too deep into these products. I'm just going to show you what I got. Now, if you, my viewers, are interested in me doing a follow-up video of some of these products that I got, we would go deeper into it because I got like a swamp cooler, I got a coffee grinder, I got a blood pressure cup, I, like I said, I got radios, I got a couple things for the garden, uh, just some random stuff. Uh, I think I even got a uh, multi-tool and some other EDC gear just to see the quality and how it looks and the stuff like that and share it with you, my viewers. And again, if you're interested, and you set up your account, if only if you're a first time user to the app, the link will work and give you 50% off your order on your first purchase. Be it if you spend $25 or $1,000, depending on what you spend, you're gonna get that 50% off. So if you do wanna give Timu a try, definitely click on that link. If you've never heard of it, you'll try it out. Buy some things that you might work for you. Maybe you don't want prepper stuff. Maybe you want some clothes. Maybe you want some bedding. Maybe you think some of the kitchen. Depending on what you want, there's an option for everyone. Take a look. Check it out. It's up to you, my viewers, to make a decision if this is something beneficial to you. And for you folks out there, unfortunately, if you already have Timu, the, the link doesn't work, so I'll be uh, upfront about that. But I'd love for, to hear from you, my viewers, because I've seen you guys talk about it in some of the live streams that we've done. And uh, I would love to hear back from you and your experiences working with Timu in regards to the products that you've received from the company. All right, so enough of that. Let's get into what I got in regards. I guess we can call this a Timu haul. Uh, what I got for about 100 bucks from Timu. We'll take a look at it and uh, on the back bench and see all the different items we got. And again, if you would like to see these items more in a scenario where I'm using these items, because if not, this video would be two hours long if I was to break everything down and use everything, but we can at least go over and look at it and discuss some of the imperfections or non-imperfections of what I've got and my thoughts on that. All right, folks. So this is the first bag that I got. This is going to be the easiest. That's why I figured I would just start with this bag here. And so I needed something for the garden. And uh, I don't know how many of you folks deal with bugs and whatnot. Basically, this is the netting for the garden, something that I can drape over. I wonder if it says the size here. Let me see here, other than the made in China, does it say the size? Yes, so it is 269 square feet, uh, and I'm not gonna try to decipher that, but 98 by 93 inches. Uh, so it's a very large net. Let's see if I can open this up real quick, uh, because a lot of us deal with bugs uh, or birds in general, um, and that's the kind of the material there. It looks pretty solid as I'm yanking on it. I'm, I feel like I'm pretty strong. But this is a very big net. And uh, to keep out a lot of the unwanted pests out of your garden, uh, that's why I picked this up. All right, to make life easier, what I did is I decided to empty this bag and take all the plastic off. So first, let's start off with uh, this antenna here. Uh, it's one of those foldable antennas that you would put on a radio. Uh, let's say something like this here uh, that you would kind of put on top of the radio to get better reception. Uh, the quality is yet to be determined. Um, kind of give you an idea of this. 
This is the one that I used in the military. Uh, my radio antenna here, as you can see, it has been abused and used. Uh, and uh, it's definitely a lot different than something like this. Uh, you can kind of see here, uh, you can see the connections. This is a female connection versus a male connection. But I figured I'd give it a try out and compare the two uh, down the road in regards to these antennas. The next thing that we're going to talk about is this little battery tester that I got here. Um, I figured why not have a battery tester uh, for pennies on the dollar. Let's see if it works and how accurate this is. Um, the nine, or this is a double A AA or AAA battery. My apologies. And uh, let's kind of check it out. You're going to, of course, you're going to put your battery right here. Move this dial on. Set up the battery there. And that way you can test your batteries. And on the outside, it has a 9-volt tester as well that you can use outside of just your standard batteries. All right, moving along, uh, this is a tourniquet holder. I wanted to compare this to my North American Rescue tourniquet holder. Uh, it seems very well built in regards to the plastic. It's not crushable. I can't crush it with my hands or twist it or anything, so it's very solid. Uh, this is a tourniquet holder that you'd wear on the outside of your belt here. Uh, this strap is very reminiscent of some other straps that I've seen on other products. Uh, it is a rubberized strap. Some people can add this to their molly, uh, and so on and so forth. But all in all, I figured why not give it a shot? Uh, it seems like at a good price. It has all the right holes in the right spots. So I figured I'd take a look at it. And again, like I said, the quality is pretty solid in regards to the ones I've paid $30 or $40 for, up to $60 for some of them uh, that I have uh, just because of the brand or the name on it and where it's made. All right, so then I saw a couple TDS and pH meters on there, and I figured I'd give them a try. Uh, and check them out. I figured they came as a combo kit uh, for your pH and your TDS, your total dissolved solids. Um, like I said, I don't know how accurate they are. Once I get them uh, measured correctly and calibrated, uh, we can go back and take a look at these as well. And again, folks, if you see anything on here that you would like me to do further videos on, we can. We can do follow-ups on every single thing or just a couple of things throughout the next few months in regards to some of the stuff that I've got off Timu. All right, moving on to something very simple. Uh, I think this was pennies on the dollar, but it's a little packet of seed uh, holders. I like the fact that you can see it where it says seed type, variety, date collected, and some growing notes. Um, comes in very handy. Uh, you know, some people will just get, buy regular envelopes or coin envelopes and write on them like I usually do because I usually buy a case of them, which is a lot more cost effective than most ways I found. But I thought this was nice. And of course, the wife saw me looking through it and she said, you better get those. So I did. Happy wife, happy life, folks. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to the next product here. Uh, this is to connect to a larger propane tank that you would connect to fill your small green propane tanks. Uh, like the little Coleman's here and attach this to that. Evidently it works properly. Uh, it does have the right seals in there. You attach this to the larger propane tank to take propane from this tank to fill this unit up here. And there's a proper way of doing that other than just connecting them. But like I said, again, uh, we can discuss that. I think Rudy over at the Alaska Prepper did a really good video on taking your from a larger propane and filling these up because it's a lot cheaper, especially if you save these like myself. Moving on to this, we got some paracord here, folks. Uh, it looks like standard paracord. Looks like seven strand there. Uh, paracord is paracord. It is rated at 550. Uh, of course, like I said, everything is to be determined. Uh, but I figured it was a nice spool for only a couple of bucks. And I figured I'd give it a shot. Uh, and like I said, run through its paces. But, you know, any, any paracord is better than no paracord. All right, moving on to this little small alcohol stove, which I think was probably 30 or 40 cents. And a lot of people can make their own little alcohol stoves. But I figured for the price point, why not check one out? It's very basic. Uh, you fill these with alcohol, of course. Uh, you light these out here. You have like a little burner there. Your alcohol flame comes here and heats this up. You can use this for warmth or for cooking or on the go, you know, be it camping or, you know, something in an emergency presents itself. These can come in handy. Um, it's lightweight um, and uh, aluminum. A lot of people make these out of like soda cans and stuff like that. If you're, you know, have the know-how and understanding how to do it. But I figure for the price point, this was a nice little... Uh, steel here. It does have a rubber seal on the inside of here so that when you do put alcohol in here and put this back together, uh, you won't have to worry about any spillage because it's nice and tight uh, from that aspect right there. All right, moving on to the last couple of little things here. This is a little uh, Barisium, uh fire kit. Uh, right here, you have a bellows that you can extend uh, to blow through here one side to the other side to kind of blow under the fire to give the, the, fire, uh, the fire more oxygen. I like that, that it came with the kit. It's kind of like a little leather kind of kit. Uh, it does have an attached striker striker as well. Let me move this to the side. Uh, and uh, as you can see, I've already kind of tried it out a little bit to make sure it actually functions because I was curious. And it actually does 
uh, spark. So I figure you can't really mess up a ferro CM rod too much. It's nice that it came with the bellows uh, as well as the striker. Uh, very basic fire kit, but for someone who wants an EDC fire kit for something uh, on the cheap, I think that's just a couple of bucks. Uh, so versus some of the other ferro CM rods that I've done in the past, uh, just for the rods themselves, especially my half inch, for half inch rods that are about half inch uh, by six inches uh, can be very costly. But for in a pinch, you can throw this in like a little go bag or a little EDC pouch or something and have a complete fire starting system uh, for you. All right, next on the list is, yes, a multi-tool. Let's check out the multi-tool. looks like it has wire cutters. Uh, it looks like it has, you know, stuff for a, uh, you know, bolts and some needle nose. Uh, let me go ahead and open this up and uh, we'll take a look at all the different accessories that it comes with. The only thing I'm concerned about is the spring here, but if you folks, if you ever lose that spring or something like that, and you know how to replace springs, uh, it might be an option because you can just kind of take these things apart and work with them. The steel itself may rust down the road, but for a, you know, a few bucks so far, it doesn't look too bad. Um, let's go ahead and open this thing up. All right. So that is all the tools that you get on there. It looks like you got a flathead, a saw, uh, a Phillips, a blade, uh, looks like a file. Uh, what do we got here? Another kind of flathead. Um, looks like a can opener, possibly. Uh, God, there's another name for that. But anyways, uh, there's your like your can opener and your bottle opener. Uh, so it has all these things on here. Now, you can just kind of collapse these. I'm going to go ahead and close everything up. Uh, and in order to, let's say, if it's locked into position, there's a little thing button right here uh, that would lock that back into position. So that if you were using this in the format, if you were using the knife or something like that, uh, you could use it. Uh, you heard that click into place to use the knife and then when you're done with it Of course, you can just kind of push this button to collapse that knife back in there nice little pouch uh, It's not the best pouch. It's a very thin nylon pouch. It does have a belt holder there I would probably switch out the nylon pouch for something else, but yeah a nice affordable thing this I'm actually going to give to uh, My daughter because she could use a multi-tool and she'll put it through its paces and uh, I'll get some feedback from her All right, so the next thing I got was this little risk electronic uh, blood pressure cuff, of course, that's a technical term for it. Uh, give you a little close-up look of all the functions on there and whatnot. It gives you some instructions, but let's go ahead and open the box. So in the box, it has this little uh, carrying case in there. It looks just like most of your other blood pressure cuffs. Uh, it's nice that it already has batteries in it and whatnot. And it's, gonna, of course, going to try to take someone's blood pressure, even though I turned it on. It should give me an error code or something like that. Maybe not. It's trying. But I'm going to go ahead and turn that thing off. Uh, but it's just one of those blood pressure cuffs that you would, of course, attach to someone's wrist. And whenever you buy stuff like this, you would probably want to make sure that you know how to properly use it because this has to be above your heart when you're using something like this. Uh, of course, we could always do demonstrations again down the road. Not to be so repetitive, but I like to kind of reiterate myself when it comes to certain things. All right, so the next thing we have on here is basically a swamp cooler. Uh, I figured this might come in handy down the road uh, for camping trips and whatnot. Basically, you would fill this with water. As you can see, there's some water down there because I wanted to do some testing on it uh, to see if it worked. Uh, I did take this out the bag a couple of days ago, and you have certain modes that you can turn on. Uh, and this is the fan speed, uh, the timer, uh, you know, it's like low and high for the cooling sensation. And of course, it has like this little glowed light. Uh, if someone was going to use this, you know, in a bedroom, like let's say my daughter or something like that, and she wanted some sort of, you know, mood lighting or whatnot, uh, you can kind of see how this works here. It has a fan in the back. And uh, that kind of gives you the specifications on that. There it is, USB-based little thing. So you can plug it in with a, you know, uh, a power station or whatnot to run it uh, and to keep it going. Uh, it would be cool if it was battery powered. Uh, there's your input there, type C. But yeah, a little swamp cooler. I thought that would be cool. I think this was about $12 to $14, uh, I think, for this swamp cooler. All right, so the next thing on here is an electric coffee grinder. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open it up and show it to you folks. All right, now that I got it out the box, we can kind of take a look at it. Uh, this is the button that you would use to, of course, start it. Take that open. Uh, it has a blade in there. It is in plug-in. What's nice is it does come with a spare blade or a different type of blade. Now, it looks just like a spare blade that I can see. It looks exactly like the one that's in there. Uh, a little brush to get things out of there when you're using it. And uh, you can do a lot more different things outside of just using a coffee grinder to grind coffee. Uh, you can make fruit powders. Uh, you can grind up other different materials. Uh, I've even seen people take this and use rice in there and try to make rice flour. But it also depends on the grinder that you have. Folks, we're almost done. I appreciate you guys uh, staying with me on this video and looking at all the products that we got from Timu for $100. And uh, 
This is a vegetable cutter. I figured I'd give it a try. Why not, right? For the price that I saw it in there, I think it was like, I don't know, again, just a few bucks. It wasn't too bad. So let's go ahead and open this up and take a look at it. All right, so now that we have it opened up, it looks like it comes with several different blades that you can use, depending on if you're doing grating cheese or some Parmesan or any of those things like that. Uh, a few slicer blades in there as well. Uh, basically that you would attach uh, to the inside of this right here. Uh, with this little lever here, you kind of pull that out. Uh, you can take this off as well to pull things out of it. Uh, that is your hopper there. Um, you can lock the mechanism in place or not, depending if you're using it. And of course, this is the hand crank right here. Uh, you can kind of see that, how it moves down there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. And like, again, basically, that's not the hopper, but this is the hopper. My apologies. This is where you can store stuff in. But anyways, you can see that down there. I'll show you the motion of this real fast. Uh, as you're trying to, let's say, move something along. Again, this is plastic, so be aware of that. Um, even though the blades themselves are metal, um, it should do the job, I think, uh, for some light to medium duty use. Uh, but again, like I said, I plan on using this extensively to see how well it lasts and how long it lasts. And I like the fact that they give you these swappable blades with a bit of instructions and this little holder here that you can do and also push down your material as you're kind of grinding away. Okay, last uh, but not least, we got two Beofang UV5Rs. Uh, for folks that are in emergency preparedness, know that this is probably the most bought uh, radio in emergency preparedness. Preppers carry a lot. So many preppers have UV5Rs. I've got uh, several of them myself, uh, but let's open up the boxes and see if these are authentic Beofang UV5Rs. Uh, regardless, I said if the stuff comes from China, most likely it is because that's where Beofangs are created is over in China. All right, so this is what you get in the box. Uh, you get this battery here. Of course, it attaches. You can remove the batteries by this button right here. Battery slides in and off. Uh, that's the information there for you folks that want to check it out. UV5R, 8 watt. Uh, used to be 5 watt, so this is definitely an upgraded version compared to some of the other ones that I have. Uh, it says it's an, an official Beofang battery. Uh, that kind of slides on there and locks into place. They give you a little uh, whip here little antenna here for you to put on and of course a charging station uh, which is nice that it comes with a whole kit so you have a charging station and uh, let's go ahead and turn her on looks like the battery is dead of course it would be but let's actually see how how compatible this is with Beofang official Beofang products that I have so I'm gonna go grab a radio real quick all right, so I couldn't find one of my UV5Rs because they're in my go bags, they're in my vehicle. Um, but I did find one of my UV5Gs, uh, which are close enough to the UV5R. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and pop this uh, extended battery off this uh, device here, uh, and we'll check it out. If I get my fingers in there, pull that battery off, pull this battery off, knock those out, and let's see if this battery works uh, on this device here, which it should be. And uh, that clicks into place nicely. Uh, let's go ahead and turn her on. Channel mode. Yep, looks like your standard Beofang. Uh, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, looks like uh, the, all the products uh, work together. Matter of fact, we can even see that if it sits in the base, uh, we're good to go. So that's not too bad, folks. Uh, so it is probably most likely an authentic Beofang UV5R. Uh, the UV5R has a female insert and this one has a male uh, on it. But all in all, I really don't see too many differences in the radios, the button layouts, everything about it, the screens, they all look very, very, very similar. Looking forward to reading your thoughts about these radios. And how many folks out there have a UV5R? And have you ever heard of the UV5G? This is a um, GMRS radio by Beofang. Um, it's quite interesting. I probably should do a review on it uh, because uh, it has a lot more distance than some of the radios that I've reviewed in the past. All right, folks, so that is everything that we got from Timu. Love to hear your thoughts on the things that I purchased for 100 bucks. Uh, your thoughts on, uh, you know, some of the things that I got. Would you have gotten some of the things, same things I've gotten? Uh, if not, what would you have gotten? I'd love to hear from you down in the comments as always. I always love interacting with you. Uh, and there's some other folks that may be interacting with each other in regards to things and experiences they have. Some people may have positive experiences, maybe have negative experiences. Kind of go over that because this is a real world conversation that we'll be having in the comment section outside of the reviews that you read on the app. So these comments and these uh, things that people discuss 
will be actually people that are watching this video as well as people who have been following me for quite some time. So I would really pay attention to the comment section because that's going to gravitate towards how well some of this stuff works and the, and the things or issues that they may or may not have or had had with the products they have purchased from Timu. Other than that, folks, if you enjoyed the video and got any value out of this information, please hit that thumbs up button. Uh, and also, if you're new here, please subscribe and take a look at the rest of the channel. We have lots of fun. We discuss lots of topics on the channel itself. And again, if you are new to Timo and you use the link down in the description, you will get 50% off your first order. To me, that was a pretty good deal in order for me to do this video. Hopefully, you folks will get some value out of that. And remember, folks, you are not alone. This is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys in a rebound. God bless, and again, thank you so much for watching.